What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916, getting down fresh out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the channel, and go to freshoutseries.com and pick up a bar of soap and wash your ass because you don't want to walk around funky. I'm here with Kristen, and we've been chopping it up. You guys have been asking for more females on the channel, so I'm making it happen. Uh, Kristen, I mean, I know you were in... Um, the Arizona State Prison System, and you know, you've seen a lot of stuff. Could you share with our viewers um, some of the crazier prison experiences that you witnessed or um, were a part of that you know people wouldn't imagine could possibly happen in a women's prison? Oh, um, a lot of fighting, just off the wall fighting, um, and not not typical cat fighting. Um, some of these girls can swing. Some of the girls are quite large uh, and strong. Um, you know, I've, I've seen people walk through and just throw somebody in a cell door, lock the door behind them, and just start whooping on them. And everybody just knows. You gotta mind your business. Mm. You know, alert you when the guards are coming. But otherwise, you keep to yourself. It's, you just gotta handle what you gotta handle. You know, you can be in the chow hall. Those are probably the worst ones I've seen, sitting in the chow hall. I remember the prison was downsizing. They were combining yards. So another yard was going to come and live on our yard. Well, this becomes territorial. Um, even though women are separated, I'm sure as it is in the men's prison, you still know the whereabouts of people. So you know who's coming over. And word gets around, so people know who's a, who owes who debts. Mm. So people want to collect, because then you get a cut. And work your way up. So there was word that there was going to be a fight on the yard because of somebody that owed somebody else. And on the medium max, there was a chow hall on the max yard in that unit. So any activity that went on, you were going to see when you went to dinner. And one girl was on one side of the fence and another girl was coming up on the other <coughs> side of the fence. And before you knew it, and I was just, you know, la la land in a line waiting for my food. And before you knew it, she had reached through, grabbed her, and had cut her with a makeshift shank right down from the eye to the mm. cheek. Um, the, the crazier thing is they both get whisked away. One girl goes, her eyes hanging, and she goes off to the hospital. But the other girl gets locked up for 30 days. She's a lifer. Her punishment was 30 days in the hole. And once she was released, she got to come back out into GP. So it's a slap on the wrist for a lifer. And, and, and like having coming back onto the same yard, did she like everybody know like, oh, don't mess with her. She's like no joke or because she had nothing to lose. She's, she's definitely one of the hardest ones that I've seen. She doesn't have anything to lose. She's never, she never gets put in a cell with a bunkie. She gets to live by herself. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and um, what is the, the major issue that that a lot of these fights are over like what's what's the what's the the major conflict in there as far as why the women get into it i would say debts and drugs um you know you never want to owe somebody whether it be for store or your drug habit um there's a lot of junkies and if you don't pay your debts that's a big taxing um and then i would say girlfriends they fight over girlfriends and that all the time. The girlfriend is always yeah. something. Yeah. The second a stud looking girl hits the yard, women claim it and start fighting. Claim what? her and start fighting. And what is considered a stud girl? Usually short hair. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, when you were in prison, did they integrate at that time any transgender men into the women's prison or no? Yes, there was one, um, and I don't even know proper pronouns, but I guess it would be a she. He was tran he was moved from the male's jail. And to he still our had a male thing. Yes, but no testicles. So technically, that makes him female. So yes, he was he was on the max unit. And how'd that play out? Was he it was was she in there hooking up with other females? I don't know because it was not my yard. But I, I did see her. Because yes. I, 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 I was talking with another guy who was a correction officer, and they were saying, like, 
when they did have that in another women's facility, um, this she had actually impregnated some of the other females. I, I mean, it didn't. I, I don't. I would imagine it still had a must have had a ball sack, but you know, it's still stuff is going down. Yes, I've heard crazy stories, but I haven't. I haven't seen or witnessed any part of that. I know a lot of people have had babies in their cells while I was there. What? I know one girl went to medical. I happened to be up at medical, and she went to medical and said she was pregnant. They sent her back. And through the grapevine, I heard that she did deliver the baby in her drawer. What? Yes. Yeah. They tried to keep it for a couple of days until somebody complained about the crying. Yeah. What? Yeah. How'd she get pregnant? I don't know. It must have been an officer. Wow. Or she came in pregnant. I don't know the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, were there a lot of incidents where when were women getting pregnant by male COs? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. There was a lot of that. Did a lot of these COs get caught in it, or the women didn't tell, or how'd that play out? Because somebody, the baby, I mean, if they get, I mean, how does that work? Well, that's a charge. For the know, guy, right? For the guy, yes. Um, and I have heard of that. Now, who's considered a victim? Because she's, she's in prison, so she's being... Absolutely, yeah. She's, she's in a controlled victim. environment, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're supposedly not at fault at all. It's considered rape, I think, isn't it? That's yeah, I, I would, that's what I would assume, because, like, if you're in subjugation to somebody who has authority over you and you get pregnant. I mean, if you resist, I mean, it's like you're in a, you're in a compromising position. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that works, you know? Yeah. There's wow. a lot of officers that have very close relationships with the inmates. So could you, could you tell like when you've seen certain officers with certain inmates like, oh yeah, they're hooking up or was there a lot of gossip or it was it pretty low key or is it like just a known thing or? I'm sure that girls are petty. So when you know that one female is with an officer, they would be off bounds, but you're gonna try to get their attention. And usually there's a give and take. So the inmate might be offering something, but I'm sure that the officer is paying up something that is valuable. Were there like the, were the inmates would if they felt like this was a officer that could possibly be compromised? Would there be like competing to try to get this guy so that he can bring him in shit? Like yes. you know, yeah. And if if you have more to present to this officer, then maybe you're gonna get more of the deal. Absolutely, yes. And and, and these officers were they the kind of guys like on the street they wouldn't get no attention. Oh no, yeah, that's that's the long-standing joke. <laughs> You didn't get any attention, so you got a badge, and you come here and walk around with the women all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know they call it a uh, prison hot, and yeah. guys, because it's like that girl you wouldn't, you wouldn't even touch her on the streets, you know. But on the prison, she's like dudes are trying to sniff her panties, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Well, the girls love it because they get all ready for the officers that come. So. Wow. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of figured that because I talked to a, I remember a guy I talked to in prison who was a guard. He was saying, he's like, dude, I worked at a women's prison for like a couple of weeks. He said, I couldn't last. He said it was too much temptation, you know, and he was a decent looking dude. So he's like, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't work yeah. there. Is there a lot of uh, like cell phones and stuff? Did you see that in, in prison here? Because I know in California, I interviewed Lady Perp and she was saying, everybody has cell phones over there, but they heard in Arizona, it's none of that. Yeah, I didn't, I never saw a cell phone. Mm. No. There were a lot of different things that come in through the prison, but I never saw a cell phone. I just thought that was a men's prison thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of curious about that because I know in Cali, it seems like that's a big thing is um, that whole racket with these cell phones coming in and, you know, people are like, well, how do they get them? I mean, it's only obvious. I mean, how the hell you get a cell phone in prison? Yeah. It's a big, it's a, you know, decent sized item. Um, was um, the administration in, in the women's prison were they pretty favorable when it came to trying to like negotiate things with the, the inmates or was it like pretty much like um, like a, a dictatorship type situation? Because I know some wardens come in and it's like they just run shit how they feel like they want to run it and they don't give a damn about the inmates or whatever as far as the food and the conditions or, you know, when you were there, were there, you know, uh, was it favorable for the women in there as far as dealing with issues in prison? Um, you've got a mix. You've got the officers that are probably calloused and have dealt with a lot of really bad situations and people, and they don't care anymore. Um, for a while, I had a job at Complex Kitchen, and 
you know, when you get there, they give you work boots, but they're very old work boots. They have holes in them. Um, the boots have holes in them? The, the, yes. You, you'd be very lucky if you didn't get a pair of shoes with holes, without holes. But um, the boots are trash. And then you're expected to line up by the V gate to go to the, the kitchen at, you know, 2.30 in the morning to get breakfast out. Well, there was a flood. Um, the first season I was there, there was a flood. And you had to trudge through about a foot and a half of water in the winter and your boots are soaked, your socks are soaked, and your pants are soaked. And then you're expected to work your six-hour kitchen shift. Wow, in the flood. Yes, yeah. And I remember the officers that didn't care at all. And I was trying to fight to get out of the kitchen. Um, women, the older women, you know, you've got 75-year-old women that are doing this as well. And they're going to come down with ammonia. Whether, I mean... Is there any, was there any grievance process to, to, to write these people up? Because I know in, in, the, in the men's prisons, they have a grievance process, but usually before you get any relief, they ship the people out so they can't actually get their mm -hmm. final judgment. Do they do the same thing there where you have women that are smart that yes, know how to write absolutely. them up? It's like the standing thing. You can write your grievance. It's never going to get anywhere. Yeah, exactly. The first desk it sits on, they're going to stop it. Yeah. It's a cold game, man. I, I tell people all the time, man, I mean, you know, this prison, you, you, you get in, you're basically at their mercy. The yeah. conditions, the food. I mean, I, I remember they, they, they were at one point serving us this really nasty food just to see what the breaking point was. I don't know if you guys ever dealt with that where they just keep, and they want to see how long they're going to serve this until you guys say, you know, we're not going to take it. That's awful. I, I know that working in complex, I saw a lot of expired, um, majorly expired on chicken tags. I know one time a bunch of people tried to get those tags back to, you know, the office so that we could let people know. And they stopped that. They'll put that chicken right back out. They don't care. <sighs> hey man, there you have it. Big Herc 916 and Kristen fresh out. You tired of smelling like stinky butt, funky armpits? Wash your ass. Go to freshoutseries.com and pick you up a bar of soap. 